Miss Joylette Zuniga, nanorobotic surgery. Good afternoon, my name is Joylette Zuniga. As some of you guys know me as Joy, I will talk, oh, hold on one second. So I was saying my presentation is going to be on nanorobotic surgery. I will briefly talk about how it all became about, where we currently are now, and where we are headed in the future. Nanorobotics, past, present, future. I will also be going more into depth about a few of the past machines that started us down in the innovative road, including the Puma 560 and the Da Vinci surgical system. I will also cover what has been added to update present versions of our past nanorobotic machines and what they can do, while also giving more information on what's the most efficient tool today, the endorist. The future and the unknown may seem scary, but in reality, it is inspiring because of a, because of a future with nanorobotic technology and can, can and will bring the future to the present where ideas like cell repair and uh, respiratories, or respirocytes, pardon, are no longer just ideas. Where we started. In 1985, we took a huge jump into the future of the medical field. When the use of the Puma 560 was first used when a, patient, when a surgeon inserted a needle inside a patient's brain for biopsy. In today's world, it may seem a little minuscule, but back then it was re <laughs> sorry, revolutionary and was the key event that kicked off the interest of nanotechnology. The events following the success of the Puma 560 in 1995 proved to be positive in precision and reliability when it came to doing tasks that were strenuous and extremely difficult for the surgeons. As you can see on your far right, that is the actual image of the Puma 560. And on your left hand side are the calculations and the angles that uh, engineers use to create the Puma 560. The Da Vinci system. With nanorobotic revolutionary advancements in the, in the medical field started to occur. The next machine was the Da Vinci system which raised the bar for nanorobotic technology. This machine is controlled from a console by the surgeon and used with four arms that will control surgical tools. The Da Vinci system main challenge was to solve the shakiness of the surgeon's hands, which could lead to accidental cuts or worse, death in some cases. Some surgeries are done with some surgeries that were done with this machine included valve repair, hysterectomy, and the prostate cancer removal. The FDA was quick to approve the tool was, was tools as its effective, effectiveness became apparent. So the Da Vinci system went on to be used more than 48,000 procedures and upward of 800 hospitals in both America and in Europe. advancements in today's technology. Nanorobotics was originally brought into the medical field not because it was just an easier way to do surgery, but because its ability to operate in the precise level of nanometer inches. With the success of the old Da Vinci system and its use of four arms, it is no longer a surprise that it would be updated and brought into the newer age with more additions. One addition was to focus on the precision to make the machine perform at an accuracy of one one thousandth of a human hair. This, was, this has become a reoccurrence in the technology today, allowing for much safer surgery with better outcomes. Another addition are sensors in the arms, which allows more precision while in use. The sensors take track motion and with rotation direction, helping the surgeons. the endo wrist. So as I continue to discuss the Da Vinci system, I think it is important to talk about what part of the Da Vinci does most of the work. And it so happens to be called the endo wrist. 
The ender wrist is the most important part of the da Vinci because of its ability to get into small places where surgeons aren't able to reach. Like for uh, the endo wrist can either clamp, can uh, laser or cut. Because of the ability of the tool, it is able to touch less internal tissue, lowering chances of infection for patients. So as you can see on the top right hand corner, that is the actual size being compared on the hand of the endo wrist. On the bottom right hand corner it is the console that the surgeons use to direct and per, uh, perform their procedure. And on the far right hand, or, sorry, left hand corner, the endo wrist on the left hand side is uh, called a microbipolar forceps, which is uh, located on the right and left hand side of the da Vinci. In the middle, that is the monopolar curved scissors, and to the right of that is the black diamond micro forcep, which is used to cut and remove. Now I will show you a brief video of the endo wrist. As you were able to see how it was how it's very tiny and very flexible for the surgeons to put wherever they need to remove where they weren't able to reach. The possibilities here are endless. With increasing breakthroughs in nanorobotics, there are now less chances for errors in the OR. With technology on the rise, it is not crazy to think that one day operating rooms may have only one person to watch the machines do surgery. Big groups in the medical field, such as the National Science Foundation, has stated that nanotechnology has the potential to enhance humans. The U.S. Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, DARPA, is developing a more war-friendly nanobot to help soldiers in the field by using the targeting technology, technology to attack wounds and diseases. This same technology would help equip medics with the ability to help more soldiers and save more lives. Ongoing research is still occurring for nano cell repair. This process is when they send a small device smaller than the size of a pill that detects the cells that need improvement and repairs them, as you can see on the screen. Respirocytes. So in 1988, a pioneer, Roberto Freitas, came up with the idea of a respirocyte. So what exactly is a respirocyte? A respirocyte is an artificial red blood cell that, ma that is manufactured using nanotechnology. These respirocytes are in a spherical shape and carries about 9 billion oxygen and carbon dioxide molecules. 200 times of the typical red blood cells, meaning that humans could run at a fun tilt for a good 15 minutes without running out of oxygen. It also has the same ability to hold oxygen, which means we could also go without having to take a breath for a long amount of time. The fact is that this technology is booming at a fast pace. We have come this far in a small amount of time. Imagine with influence, investment, and time how far this technology will go to improve lives. As we continue to grow, it is important to know how much we have already solved. Technology continues to advance, and it is amazing and inspiring to think about what our future has in store for us. Yes, we make mistakes, we learn from these mistakes, and we grow from these. And I believe that this is the right track to achieve these goals. Thank you. Any questions? Yes? Um, I know there 
like the research is still happening, so I wouldn't be able to officially tell you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is a very great question to which I cannot answer. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay, thank you.